Good evening, Calvary, and welcome to your 6 p.m. call to prayer. I hope you have enjoyed our evening prayer times together, facilitated by Calvary's ministers. It has been our desire to unite our church family through the practice of calling upon God, as well as listening to the Spirit's voice. Tonight, we are focusing on our emotional well-being. I think we all can agree that much has changed since last year. For each of us, these changes vary in degree as well as circumstance, but we all share in common some deeply felt emotions as we walk through this season. Emotions like grief and stress, sorrow and anger, fear, anxiety, and even loss. Which of those emotions have you felt over the last nine months? Maybe you are experiencing some of those emotions even today. It's important for us to identify our emotions, to identify how we are feeling. God created us to feel, to love, and to experience. And each of us is unique in how we respond to life's circumstances. It's encouraging for me to read in scripture about those who experience deep, challenging emotions, like some of the ones I just mentioned. To read about David, who is described as a man after God's own heart, as he pours out his heart about deep sorrow and grief that he felt. I'm reminded that I'm not alone in my emotions. I'm not alone in how I feel. But I'm also reminded that I can take those things, those things that burden my heart, I can bring them to the Lord and give those to him. And I can trust that he can handle it. It will never be too much for him to bear. During the pandemic, I have spent some time in Psalm 42. Though the psalmist is not identified, many would um, believe that David is the author based on the style and the content of the psalm. But nevertheless, the psalm is clearly written by what I would describe as a discouraged saint. One who longs to not only be in the presence of God, but also to worship in the house of God with the people of God. But due most likely to being exiled, worship in the temple was not possible. Many of us today can relate to this discouraged saint. How we've longed to be present with one another, worshiping the way that we are used to worshiping, to lift our voices together and sing songs of praise, to give a handshake and offer a good morning to our church family, to be blessed by our sanctuary choir, filling the room with beautiful melodies, and even just to join the receiving line when a lost brother or sister finds their way home. We long to be back at Calvary, worshiping in the way we are used to. And as time marches on, this desire grows stronger and stronger. Listen to Psalm 42, one through five, and discern ways in which you identify with this heartfelt cry. As the deer pants for streams of water, my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night. While men say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving, among the festive throng. Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. We can identify feelings of desperation through the psalmist's words. He's desperate for the presence of God. And although he knows God is near to him wherever he is, he still longs to worship in the temple like he once did. He has lost something and he wants it back. 
I think we can all identify with that desperation. We have all lost something this year and we want it back. In verse four, the psalmist identifies the high times and holidays, especially as emotionally challenging. He's nostalgic about how it made him feel to celebrate with all the people. These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude leading the procession to the house of God with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. We can share in the grief of recognizing this year will not be like years past. We won't gather as a church to fellowship around the table at our annual Thanksgiving feast. The crowd might be smaller at your own Thanksgiving table. And we will most likely not sing Silent Night shoulder to shoulder in the sanctuary accompanied by a beautiful choir. And for some, it will be the first Christmas without someone you love. We must acknowledge that grief. We must acknowledge that sorrow. But the good news is we don't have to surrender to our grief or discouragement or to our anxiety or to our sorrow. In verse five, the psalmist challenges his feelings and brings them before God. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. There are some valid reasons for discouragement. There are many more reasons for hope. And even though the psalmist states that he wasn't quite ready to praise God in his grief and in his sorrow, he knew that if he did what he could to direct his hope in God, that eventually praise would come forth. The quote from Samuel Smiles describes hope well. Hope is like the sun, which as we journey towards it, casts the shadow of our burden behind us. My prayer for us all tonight is that we would put our hope in God, that we would challenge those feelings we have and not dwell on them, but rather dwell in the hope we have in Christ. Faith reasons with fear. Hope argues with sorrow. As we pray tonight, we are going to use Psalm 42, 1 through 5 as our guide. And I invite you to pray with me. Let's pray. As the deer pants for the streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? Lord, we long for your presence and ache to fill you with us. We look forward to the day we can gather as a church to once again worship and glorify you in the way we did before the challenges of the pandemic. We desire to commune with our brothers and sisters in Christ, face to face. Our hearts long for that connection with you and with our church family. My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, where is your God? Lord, we have all felt grief on some level over this past year. Some have experienced deep sorrow through the loss of a loved one. Some have felt fear over the loss of income. And some have felt anxiety over the uncertainty this pandemic has caused. While the world doesn't understand our faith, we know we can bring our burdens to you. We can cast them upon you because you care for us. These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude leading the procession to the house of God with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Lord, we know the holiday season is especially nostalgic. And this means it can be especially difficult for some. Lord, we pray for those who will be spending their holiday in the absence of someone they love. Lord, we pray for the one who is grieving, the one who feels deep sorrow. 
May you give peace where peace is absent. And Lord, may our eyes be open to the needs of others, both physical and emotional, as we navigate a holiday season in the midst of a pandemic. Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Lord, as we acknowledge our own grief or pain or sorrow or anxiety, don't allow us to dwell in that place. But rather, Lord, remind us of the hope we have in you. When we are afraid, remind us you are here. When we are anxious, remind us you are in control. When we are weak, remind us you are strong. And when we cannot see the path before us, remind us that you will guide us. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Put your hope in God, friends. We are confident that he will come through again because he has before. The Hayes family wants to wish you and yours a happy Thanksgiving. We count our church family as a blessing, and there's not a better year to remind you that we are grateful for you.